Her Excellency, Mrs. Neil Jane Masisi, the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana. My dear sisters, Your Excellencies, African First Ladies, Chairman of the Executive Board of Merck, Professor Frank Stangenberg Haverkamp, CEO of Merck Foundation, Senator Dr. Rasha Kelej, distinguished healthcare providers, policymakers, and the media, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all a very, very good morning. It is my utmost honor and privilege as I join my dear sisters, excellencies of African First Ladies, and all of you as one of the participating guests of honor in celebration of the ninth edition of Merck Foundation Africa Asia Luminary this morning. This conference comes at a historic moment when the world is going through a recovery phase after experiencing the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, it is of significance that we are able to once more meet in person as, as long-term partners after a 24 months disruption brought about by the pandemic. A pandemic that was accompanied by many lessons at it, as it revealed just how fragile some of our health systems are. You will all agree that it is thanks to many of you who are here and still remain frontliners in your respective countries that we have made it here today when combined millions globally could not survive. We thank you all frontliners. Round of applause, please. As a Merck Foundation, more than a mother ambassador, I'm very excited to be a part of this prestigious conference. Let me appreciate Merck Foundation for organizing this conference, which has brought together participants from over 70 countries, a very significant footprint indeed. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the continued valuable partnership that we have with Merck Foundation, spanning four years since our first meeting in Dakar, Senegal, which actually seemed like just yesterday, with so much being done. During this period, together we have achieved some very important milestones as tangible impact has been made in building quality and equitable healthcare capacity, and including efforts to break the stigma of infertility and to stop gender-based violence. All these initiatives building on to the attainment of sustainable development Goal three, which aspires to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages by 2030. SDG three can be achieved through access to quality health care, which ideally would be provided by qualified medical personnel. Through the Merck Foundation partnership, 31 scholarships have been provided to medical personnel from the public sector in Botswana. These are from different underserved and critical specialties such as diabetes, endocrinology, dermatology, oncology, respiratory medicines, acute medicines, and sexual and reproductive medicines. Similar to many of our countries, ladies and gentlemen, non-communicable diseases remain a threat as these silent killers contribute to a significant number of deaths in our countries. COVID-19 also confirmed the threat that NCDs pose those with underlying conditions were placed as the most vulnerable during the epidemic. For those scholarships covering NCDs, this program contributes in part to Botswana's national strategic framework on, national on NCDs. Let me share some specific numbers of doctors who are beneficiaries of these scholarships. There was a scholarship provided to a doctor for the Oncology Fellowship Program in India, and pleased to say that she has completed the course and back to the country to serve our people who need her services. 16 scholarships have been provided for the postgraduate diploma and MSc in diabetes and postgraduate diploma in endocrinology. Four scholarships were also provided for the postgraduate diploma and MSc in acute medicine and one scholarship for re respiratory medicine. A scholarship was provided for a postgraduate diploma in dermatology and one scholarship for postgraduate diploma in gastroenterology. Additionally, seven scholarships have been provided for postgraduate diploma and MSc in sexual and reproductive medicine. And for my country, Botswana, this will significantly improve women's health in general and reproductive health, more so that we have a limited number of gynecologists in the country. 
Naturally, this program is of particular interest to me as a Merck Foundation More Than a Mother Ambassador. Excellencies, First Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very appreciative of the strong commitment that Merck Foundation has in strengthening health systems which serve to advance health care in the public sector, not only in my country, but across Africa, Asia, and underserved communities globally. All these contributions will ensure improved health outcomes, resulting in healthy communities, healthy nations, and a healthy world, which contributes to overall development. During COVID-19, like many other countries, we experienced an accompanying pandemic where we saw an unprecedented increase in gender-based violence and child abuse. As part of our program to stop gender-based violence, I'm very happy to share that Merck Foundation donated 20 industrial sewing machines which have been distributed to women groups whose mandate includes fighting against gender-based violence and women empowerment. This was an effort to promote income generation and, of course, skills acquisition, which will result in improved livelihoods and those of the family members and community at large. The aim is so victims of domestic violence become independent as productive members in the society, thus reducing dependency on men who are the main perpetrators. To date, we've distributed 14 of those sewing machines, and the remaining will be donated during the first quarter of 2023. During 2019, together with Merck Foundation, we launched a poster contest on Stop GBV as part of the gender-based violence campaign, contributing to our efforts in ending the scourge in Botswana. My office is currently in the process of compiling the winning posters into a publication which will be shared in the very near future. Dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Gender-based violence continues to destroy families and has not only taken us back in the achievement of development goals, but promoted disunity within communities, both at national and international levels. I continue to accelerate efforts in the fight against the scourge, and I must say that the government of Botswana also has stepped up efforts in the prevention and response to gender-based violence. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to highlight other ongoing initiatives currently supported by MEC Foundation. We are working together to create a children's storybook whose primary aim is to raise awareness on the need for society to listen and also believe that victims of gender-based violence and child abuse are experiencing. And also to encourage these youngsters and young women to speak out, for in speaking out, then only can they get help. Furthermore, the office is in the process of adapting Merck Foundation storybooks across the thematic areas of importance of educating girls, ending child marriages, women empowerment, and of course, eliminating the infertility stigma. The intention is that these books will be distributed across the country in schools where adults and girls and young women continue to face these challenges. Merck Foundation has also provided support to development of a gender-based violence song, which forms a part of my national GBV awareness campaign with a key message of sensitizing the public on gender-based violence and as a call for communities to act together against this evil, particularly the men, that you are a major stakeholder and actually you can make the difference. During the early part of 2023, Merck Foundation will provide media training for all media houses and communication specialists. In tertiary, and including mass communication students and tertiary schools in our country, providing guidance on the significant influence they have on consumers of news, particularly in creating the perceptions on issues such as infertility, gender-based violence, and women empowerment. Ladies and gentlemen, we have also launched together more than a mother awards for film, filmmakers, media, those in the media, singers, fashion designers, across a wide range of social issues mentioned earlier. Infertility, ladies and gentlemen, remains traumatic with scaring effects on women worldwide as these women's worth is compromised at all levels within our communities, leading to their fragile self-esteem. These women go through violence, divorce, and painful stigma as the blame lays solely on them for the childless home. Global data, according to the World Health Organization, states that between 48 million couples and 186 million individuals have infertility. Whilst we are not aware of the exact figures on infertility in Botswana, 
from anecdotal evidence, it is known that polycystic ovary syndrome is the main cause of infertility, followed by endometriosis and other tubal disorders. And this lack of um, numbers and, and, and concrete data points at the fact that there are gaps in, in research. And those of you who are in academia and um, research institutions, I urge you to continue collecting this data and may it given the priority that other data is given. Nonetheless, due to delays in seeking medical attention by the majority, women consequently suffer from social stigma, putting them further at risk of abuses by their partner, family members, and community. Similar to most of our countries in Africa, availability, access, affordability, and quality of interventions to address infertility remain a challenge in Botswana. Just to share a few numbers, there are a limited number of gynecologists in the, in the public sector who would ordinarily serve the majority of citizens. We cannot afford private medical facilities. To illustrate the extent of dire gaps in service provision, there's only one fertility specialist who's in private sector and based in the capital city of Habarone. We can see that those in the rural areas are automatically disadvantaged. Not only can they not afford use of these services, but also they do not have the economic muscle. The lack of trained personnel and high cost of treatment remain barriers to accessing world-class facility care. Currently, assisted reproduction interventions such as IVF are only offered by one fertility specialist in the country, as I had said earlier. Moreover, medical insurance schemes do not cover costs for this intervention, making it largely unavailable and unaffordable to the majority. The few who can afford such services seek medical attention in neighboring South Africa, with the exceptional traveling outside the continent. These interventions no doubt place a financial burden to the couples with the added anxiety burden that success is not even guaranteed after spending so much. In addressing infertility in our country, some gender-related issues could be mitigated and it requires strengthening health system capacity in fertility care. Once again, I'd like to thank Merck Foundation for hosting us and for their valuable programs geared at advancing our healthcare sector and raising awareness about sensitive issues such as infertility stigma, child marriages, and gender-based violence. I appreciate that they have continued to prioritize support despite resource constraints, financial to be specific, that were posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In addressing these issues, it will improve health outcomes in our respective countries. These initiatives also serve to further empower women and girls and give them self-esteem as they in turn continue to take care of future generations of both girls and boys because we should never forget those boys out there who will one day become men. And both the two girls and boys will one day become the men and women leading our countries, most importantly, helping us achieve the no one left behind. I continue to pledge my commitment to the Merck Foundation First Ladies Initiative and I look forward to the years of partnership ahead. Once again, happy anniversary Merck Foundation and thank you for caring through all these seasons. I thank you all for your attention. <laughs>